J.K. Rowling in Arrest Me Challenge over hate crime law. Hey, I've just found out how to do banners using this software. I'll make one now to lead into this story. It's almost like watching the BBC. You're a transphobe, Harry. <laughs> Very professional. All jokes aside, obviously J.K. Rowling isn't a phobe or an ist, and it falls to me, alas, it falls to the bootneck to defend someone who has been a proper lefty pain up the arse for about 20 years. J.K. Rowling was famously giving money to my eternal foes, at least since I grew up and got out of my 20s, uh, the Labour Party. Yes, she's been throwing money at them for years. She's left and woke and liberal on every single topic. And then the second it comes to this, proving that the woke ideology is in fact a cult and all the practitioners of it are as closed-minded and dangerous as the inquisitors of the catholic church 500 years ago you go against them on one thing and all of a sudden you're the outcast you're the enemy uh, and they will lock her up if they get the chance i will put her in the gulag and they won't feel a single moment's shame as a lifelong lefty is chiseling away the salt mines. Brilliant. So sit back and relax as I talk you through the story and explain exactly why once beloved left-wing children's author J.K. Rowling is actually hatred personified. <laughs> She's basically Osama Bin Laden with tits. All right, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Okay, this story's a beauty. Obviously, the world's gone mad when a woman as left-wing and reasonable as J.K. Rowling is now being goaded like she's Beelzebub's milk maiden or something. It doesn't make any sense. But let's have a read and see what you think. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Gaze upon the face of hatred. <laughs> J.K. Rowling has challenged Scotland's new hate crime law in a series of social media posts, inviting police to arrest her if they believe she has committed an offence. The Harry Potter author, who lives in Edinburgh, described several transgender women as men, including convicted prisoners, trans activists and other public figures. I love the way even the BBC has to join in with this stuff. Oh, she described these transgender women as men. Disgraceful. Have you seen some of the people she pictured? Uh, well, allow me. I heard y'all hate trans women, knives and axes. Love from Las Vegas. <laughs> there she is. There's Beth. Pleasant, reasonable Beth. A big burly bastard with a big axe. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think I'm a tough guy, but if I bumped into that in a dark alley, wielding a twin-bladed axe like Drust the Legend himself, I would probably coil one out in my undercrackers and... <laughs> turn and flee in the opposite direction. <laughs> Strange for a man, an angry bootneck no less, to be so easily intimidated by a member of the fairer sex. Lovely Scottish lass and convicted double, uh, surprise sex, you have to, you have to call it that, this is YouTube, um, surprise sex uh, doer, Isla Brinson found her true authentic female self shortly before she was due to be sentenced. Misgendering is hate, so respect her pronouns. Love the leggings. <laughs> See, this is what I'm telling you. People erroneously send me messages and say, Bootneck, you're a funny guy. You should be a professional comedian. No, anyone can be funny in this day and age. You just turn the camera on and read out the things that the people that run the world think are sane. And it is endless side-splitting comedy. The material writes itself. Isla Brinson is a meat axe with a skinhead and a face tattoo. <laughs> and then puts on a pair of pink leggings and a bit of pink lippy. And if you don't call her her, yes, my lady, you're a bad person. You're a bad person. Not Isla, face tattooed meat axe skinhead who donkeys one into women while they're minding their own business on the way home from work. No, you're the bad person. Not Isla, bless her cotton socks. Oh yeah, and as for those cotton socks, <coughs> Isla's rolled up three pairs of them and stuffed them down the front of her drawers by the looks of things. <laughs> hey, what's that down there? What's that down there, Isla? Are you carrying half a pound of sausages and two scotch eggs home for your mum? Or are you pleased to see me, Isla? <laughs> Fragile flower, Katie Delasky, six foot five, was rightly sent to a women's prison in Scotland after conviction. This ensured she was protected from violent, predatory men, unlike the 10-year-old girl that Katie sexually assaulted. <laughs> Six foot five. 
Six foot five? How, how can that have not stood out? You would think, like, the second Katie walked into the lady's toilet, like, a semicircle had form around her. Behemoth! I'll, d- I'll do a couple more because they're hilarious. And then I'll get to the point. Samantha Norris was cleared of exposing her penis to two 11-year-old girls. Hooray! Unfortunately, she was then convicted for possession of 16,000 vile images of children. Scottish woman and butcher Amy George abducted an 11-year-old girl while dressed in female clothing. No idea why this was mentioned in court. Of course she was wearing women's clothing. She's a woman. She took the girl home and sexually abused her. (laughs) Yay for inclusion. Anyway, you get the point. I could go on all day. Let's get to the meat of this topic, shall we? Scotland's First Minister, Humsey Useless, said the new law would deal with a rising tide of hatred. The Hate Crime and Public Order Act creates a new crime of stirring up hatred related to age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity or being intersex. The law does not protect women as a group from hatred. So you can practice the most vile misogyny and nobody will say anything about it because actual women aren't imp- aren't included in the law. Just people people like me who put on a frock and a bit of lippy and if you think that's fair and reasonable you have got a head full of horse shit that's all I can tell you crikey I've just noticed how bad my lighting is it's California it's almost too pleasant and sunny and green and most importantly protected from hate crime legislation in Scotland by the uh, first amendment the point ultimately I could make 10 but I've got to keep this short the real point is simply this Wesley Snipes said it best in the prescient movie Demolition Man, which is apparently being used for documentary purposes in Scotland. Like they watched evil Mr. Rogers in (laughs) Demolition Man and said, this is all a fantastic idea, let's do that. But Wesley summed up best, managing in three seconds what I couldn't do in ten minutes. San Angeles will be a beacon of order, with the purity of an ant colony and the beauty of a flawless pearl. Look, you can't take away people's right to be assholes. Yes, indeed. You cannot take away people's rights to be assholes. These ill-thought-out, ill-conceived, ludicrous laws by cringe, social engineering, delusional psychopaths like Yums are useless are not enforceable. It's impossible to have state-mandated politeness because there are an endless, endless list of things you could be offended or upset about. Right? Hence the simplistic statement, you cannot take away a man's right to be an asshole. You just can't do it. Something that offends you might not offend me and vice versa. You cannot have a system in place where trans women have more rights than women. Where you can call a woman any name under the sun and not get arrested for it. But you can get arrested if you call a man in a dress the same stuff. It's preposterous. State mandated politeness can never work. All we need to do is get back to freedom, allow people to call each other whatever they want and be as rude to each other as they like and allow society to police it. It works perfectly fine over here in the United States that doesn't have all of these ludicrous laws, but we still get along quite nicely, thanks very much. We have a functioning society. Nobody walks around at my work calling everybody ethnic and racial slurs all the time. It doesn't happen because polite society polices itself just fine without the intervention of deranged monomaniacal psychopaths like hums are useless. Frankly, I prefer evil Mr. Rogers because at least he seemed to have a sense of humour and he wasn't a racist. So that's just my opinion. If you disagree, you think JK Rowling's a bad person, you let me know why in the comments and I'll let you know why I don't think any woman on God's green earth has an eight inch bony clitoris. All right. <laughs> All right. That, that's just my opinion. Controversial, I know. All right. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. See you all very soon. Toodle pip.